matters which will affect the country and its people decades from now. We will be honored to have with us distinguished guests this morning. First time I took up on the list of that is Senator Grace Paul, one of those rumored to uh, be a presidential paper in 2016, after during the 2013 midterm election. We also have with us a diplomat's daughter and a diplomat herself, an outstanding lawmaker and chair of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, Senator Leti Lama Shanani. Sa maling po natin, mga kaibigan, pag nababakit ang pangalan nito, nung pala kami kita ko, lagi na associate sa Kudita. And his name is Commodore Rex Robles. However, kasama rin po natin nasa Dabong Dulo, si Reden Alcantara, mula sa isang grupo ng mga manggagawa, na nawala na ng gawain sa pagkat na matagal sa trabaho. Narito rin po si Ginong Alim Bandara, isang tinuray. Siya po ay kabilang sa indigenous people na sa core area ng Bangsamoro na maaring usap in government may be considered a spoiler to the peace process. But he's here to raise legitimate issues about the recently signed agreement between the MILF and the government of the Republic of the Philippines. Simulan muna natin sa ating topic, ito po yung Enhanced Defense Cooperation Agreement. Alam po rin yun, nakalipas na Sabado, pinag-aralan kong mabuti, ilang beses kong pinag-aralan, yung nilalaman ng yung kasumbuhan. I was hoping to get answers to my questions, but I ended up having more Questions. Some would say it is not to the Philippines' best advantage at iba pa. So let's start the poll. Simulan natin dun sa mga mahayat brief statements from our guests. Simula kay Senator Grace Po, kay Manu Levy, at kay Governor Rex Longes. Ano nga kaya itong kasunduan ito? How would you describe it? Is it in the best interest of the Filipino people? Salamat po, Mr. Acuna, sa inyong pagpapaulak sa atin. Um, I'd like to stress that I'm here mostly also to learn from our veteran um, foreign policy um, advisor <laughs> well, who's been in, who was in the Senate, um, of course, before me, and who I also witnessed. I, I heard her much recently in Head Start, and she was excellent um, explaining our foreign policy positions. Um, I am not an expert on the EDCA. I don't think I'm even a member of the Foreign Relations Committee. On the other hand, having read the eight pages short uh, agreement, I can, I can say that it's straightforward, easy to understand, obviously drafted um, with the help of the Americans because I'm for plain writing bill, and it's pretty easy to understand. Um, if there's anything, it would have been nice if they submitted it to the Senate for scrutiny and for concurrence. On the other hand, reading it, I don't think um, it directly violates our constitutional rights. And if there's anything that I like about it, it's institutionalizing uh, their help in our disaster preparedness um, uh, capabilities. But of course, the success of the EDCA will rise and fall with the way it's implemented. If it will truly be beneficial to our country, what basis they will choose uh, to set up their installations or whatever, how they will help us in response to the bullying by other countries. So let's listen to the other experts regarding this. With other questions you might have, I might uh, know, uh, be more comfortable with the answers. Thank you, Nello, and um, good morning to the uh, honorable members of the media today. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Nello for inviting me to this tapata. Uh, uh, like Grace, it really is a, uh, an opportunity to be and really to learn what's happening in town. Um, I'm not really a foreign policy expert, but um, in my stint in the Senate, my two years during in the Senate, I headed the foreign relations committee during the time that the basis uh, uh, agreement was rejected by the Senate. Oh, oh, 
Well, it's going to get a new story. Uh, I think I see all, all you very young faces. I'm more than in uh, 1991 uh, photos of Senado, and no? And I keep referring to that, to that uh, time. Although my vote was a critical yes, I voted yes for the extension. You see, I, I, mean, I did not know to be magnificent at well. <laughs> but I didn't know what that magnificent thing is now to tell you that cruz, you see. So, uh, so I think it's good for us to go back into some history. Because in foreign policy, you see, you must remember what uh, Lord Akumu once said. In relations among states, we have no permanent friends, we have no permanent enemies, we have only permanent interests. Are you going to talk about the last name? So uh, I'm really happy to be here, and uh, hopefully we'll have a objective and full, full discussion. May you have to talk about the orientations? Because all of this is long term. Who would have thought when we voted for the basis out that China would be the next adversary? You see, I mean, uh, it's like uh, living in, in the world of uh, fiction now. So uh, let, let's be cool, even those of you in the media in charge of foreign policy, because this is all long term. And if you want to engage the Chinese, they think in terms of centuries, not only of tomorrow. <laughs> so thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everyone. My, if you call them insights uh, at all, was the, were developed way back in 1977 when we started to renegotiate the basis. And we were forced at the level of the Department of National Defense under what we were forced to look at the whole world. Because when you negotiate a basis agreement, it affects not only the two countries involved, but the rest of the region. So I found out, uh, and Shahadi just mentioned it, that n nothing is permanent. For instance, Singapore used to come here to go 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 this was in 77 when we were, we were talking about the basis. We were still young at the time. I was on for the last time. I was on for the But anyway, so, sabi niya sa kay President Marcos, uh, the Chinese would like to say something very private to you. Please do not ask the Americans to leave. Please do not ask the Americans to leave. In other words, they needed the United States at that time to counterbalance Russia, which was the primary power. And if you remember in 77, China was not the same in terms of power, in terms of, in terms of standing as it is today. So things change. And uh, there is no nothing permanent as uh, mentioned by uh, So we are here. Uh, to recognize that and uh, to to bear it in mind so that we do not go into a kumisa nang usapan derecho sa era na ba ng gagad eh ah pagkain ng tanga tayo ano gagawin natin ah pagkapinomba nila yung ganito yung iniisip natin is already already uh, like a yung scenario yung parang doomsday scenario it's not really that that passes. Okay, very well. Dr. Tremit, nice of you to have come. What are your thoughts about the recently signed agreement? Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you for this uh, opportunity to share some of my thoughts. Uh, what I'd like to do briefly is uh, situate the ESCA in, in a broader context. No? I'm sorry I missed uh, Senator Shahan's earlier presentation. But I also believe that we need to take a very long-term view of our foreign policy uh, with uh, China and, and with any country for that matter. You know? Because after all, whether we like it or not, China uh, is, is a uh, geopolitical reality in our region. You know? uh, now, EDCA obviously was an attempt by the Philippine government, and not only an attempt, but it's now a formal response to what is seen as a 
major uh, conflict with uh, China, an emerging major conflict. And uh, my, uh, and when I say my, uh, our organization, the uh, SEMPEC, which is a research policy and policy group, also believes that the EDCA is in fact a very uh, short-term view of the problem and ultimately unproductive view. You know? And in fact, we need to think out of the box precisely because of the long-term implications of any policy that we pursue. Thinking out of the box means that uh, we need to understand these given realities we need to explore all possible avenues of resolving any conflict with our neighbors, especially with a major power like China. And that includes even those that may not be in the immediate agenda at the moment. Now, what am I referring to? For instance, uh, we at Sempe believe that we should not hesitate, in fact, in pursuing bilateral relations with China. Why do we resist in doing that? The usual response is, well, at time laban sa China, we're dealing with a major power, and since we are a much bigger power, any kind of bilateral talks uh, will always be to our disadvantage. Now, why is that necessarily so? Especially if uh, we rely on, uh, uh, if, if we if we are confident that uh, we have that we have necessary diplomatic skills, that uh, we can rely on certain historical and political linkages. After all, we have that. There is no reason why we should not pursue bilateral talks. Now, if it turns out that the, that the talks uh, prove to be extremely disadvantageous to us, then we can always say we're done with that. But at least we, we have explored that option. Huh? Uh, we also need to look into other uh, possibilities, which uh, many of us may may uh, may consider even to be prisoners, you know, or threat, uh, uh, prisoners, not uh, anti-nationalists. Okay. And I'm I'm referring to the possibility, and this is not original with us. Some of us have already addressed uh, this in the past. The Sprout list, as you know, includes not only conflict between China and the Philippines, but including our neighbors, other uh, neighbors like uh, Brunei, uh, Malaysia, and Vietnam. You know? I, I exclude the Panatag show here, because clearly, uh, by, by all indicators, Panatag show uh, it is, uh, should be uncontestably Philippine territory. You know? I had a problem with this practice precisely because of these uh, many parties involved. I think we should not, we should also explore the possibility of some kind of joint management of the area involving all the parties involved. Now, I cannot go into details about this, mm -hmm. but that is one prospect, one possibility that we need to look into. You know? So, uh, this is what I mean by thinking out of the box. You know? The EDCA represents a very militaristic uh, response to the problem. It uh, is primarily in, uh, in conjunction to the broader strategic interest of the U.S. in the region. And uh, it, it, it is not clear. Uh, uh, while it may, res it may address some short-term problems, it does not provide us, I believe, with the longer uh, with a longer term view of the problem. You know? okay. How would you describe the Philippine foreign policy today? Philippine foreign policy today, well, yeah, Ian and I, I think uh, the, uh, we've never uh, been able to get out of the old problem, the old weakness, where uh, we've always seen the United States as the savior of all our problems. You know? Now, uh, this is not to say that we should uh, uh, rely on the U.S. on many problems. And there, there are many problems uh, from our point of view where the U.S. can be a very uh, effective ally. You know? But what we have lost is precisely the critical perspective. And in the case of EFCA, uh, again, I think what has happened here is uh, 
a Philippine foreign policy has allowed itself to be subsumed to a largely American strategic interest. No? Okay. Um, well, you know, I'm, I've never forgotten my training as a diplomat. You know, when I went into politics, it was quite a big transition. So I was not really a favorite of media because uh, they would always put the microphone under my mouth. And my comment always, and my reply would always be a typical diplomatic reply, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> so the media thought I was very boring. Huwag na kayo na lalapit dyan ni Shahani, wala naman siyang sinasabi eh. You see? And um, maybe that's because foreign policy, as Professor Rivera said, is long term in its consideration. The Chinese are right, you have to think in terms of centuries because you are thinking not of the benefit of one congressman or one Mrs. Napoles or one uh, barangay captain, but you're thinking of the welfare of the nation forever. You see, so this, this is why I think it is wonderful that in the 1987 constitution, for the first time in the Filipino constitution, there is foreign policy mentioned explicitly in Article 2, Section 7 in the Declaration of Policies. What does our 1987 Constitution says? The state shall pursue, pursue, not, not decide immediately, shall pursue, maganda yung English word, shall pursue an independent foreign policy in its relations with other states. The paramount Paramount, the paramount consideration should be territorial integrity, national sovereignty, national interest, and the right to self-determination. For a diplomat, these are such beautiful words. And uh, I keep quoting this because I think this should be our guidelines now. And this is a very important part in our history because for the first time, the Philippines is on the stage of foreign policy global wide. And we have become a player from a mere colony. We are now in the midst of between two giants, you know, China and um, America. And we are in a position to determine whether they will succeed or not. So what is the Philippine attitude? I think that I, I agree with Professor Rivera, though I don't know what is his uh, position on other points. But I agree that we have to take the long-term perspective. What is good for this nation? And we have to take in, in uh, account not only America, which is, has its problems of its own. I mean, you know, Obama, I'm sure, was thinking of the 19, uh, of the coming uh, elections, and he was the Democratic Party to win. So he had to have a very delicate balancing act, and you can force him, even if it's on the Philippines, we will defend you, uh, you know, whether right or wrong. So he had to, you know, very, I mean, use words which were really very open to interpretation. Like, ironclad sounds good, but it can also mean nothing and everything. <laughs> so uh, I think this is a time, even for media, I hope that you will not just be. Uh, tickled by the next uh, uh, Chinese uh, invasion or by the, the next uh, encounter between our um, pathetic uh, Coast Guard <laughs> and the uh, Chinese. Uh, this will be a long-term fight and it really depends on every Filipino citizen. It's not only foreign policy, you know, I'm from Pangasinan. This is both domestic and international. Because the West Philippine Sea is where I was born, Lingayen Gulf. And I know the Lingayen Gulf because every time I would have a call, my mother would say, you go to the sea and get your cold defeated. Uh, or when I would have a lot of mosquito bites, she would say, you go to the Lingayen Gulf and all of your mosquito bites will be uh, cured. What does that mean? It means that what is West Philippine Sea to a Filipino child is home. That is home. When I was a child also, I told the idea about Masindok. I'm sure you don't know where Masindok is. They call it now Scarborough. Scarborough is one of those uh, 
cartographers, I think, or uh, adventurers, an Englishman. His name was Scarborough, and I think he discovered that on the map. So they named that Scarborough, but it's really Masinlok. Now the people in Masinlok call it Carborough. <laughs> What is international becomes domestic. But I'm telling you, if there's anyone from Mexico, don't be offended. But that's what I learned something about sex as a child. Because every every child in Lingayan knows that Mexico, which is a mining town also, is where the prostitutes go. You see, so when you will eat and kiss, you say, oh, Mexico, no, 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 no. So it's part of our growing up. It's part of our history as a people. Living right there in the barangay near the Dada. So this is not only international, it is the livelihood of millions of Filipinos who depend on fishing and on the maritime uh, structure. So this issue, and by the way, there's also an archipelago. An archipelago under the Convention of the Law of the Sea is defined as a country that is united by its waters around it. And we are. There are only two archipelagos in ASEAN, Indonesia and the Philippines. Japan did not opt to be an archipelago. In Tarana, Fiji is an archipelago, united by water. And this is how they have to answer this foreign policy. We should be mermaids, mariners, no, swimmers, but we should learn to swim, not in swimming pools, but in the sea. To know the currents and, and the stars and the winds and please ladies don't use skin whiteners because if you are if you really love the sea you will be black you see like me i'm very dark <laughs> but you see it shows to you that we consider the sea a threat we are not really at home in the sea as filipinos we always like to go underneath the tree but we should be at home in the sea and this is how the media and the, our children should be. So this is really maybe one of the most defining moments in our history. As a people, and as a neighbor, and as a member of the international community. Thank you. Senator, uh, what are your thoughts about foreign policy? How is it today? Well, of course, I, I, I am very much uh, whatever I get, what you see in the papers now, and you know, it's, it's amazing how when, when you mention Bangwa de Masindo, ito pala yung, uh, let's say, Scarborough. No? Tapos yung dun naman sa baba, uh, Ayungan Shon, uh, naman. So there's a lot of things to be learned from our foreign policy, then, and I'm very, I found myself very lucky to have this opportunity to sit beside, of course, Senator Shahani. But uh, there are certain points that were raised today, which is very important. Number one is, who will save us but ourselves? In determining our foreign policy, uh, it was mentioned by Dr. Rivera, let us uh, have a cultural mind shift that um, we are grateful for the support given to us by friendly nations. But at the end of the day, everybody will always think of what is best for themselves. And the Philippines will have to be able to to always have that in mind. And then number two also, what was mentioned that we should continue our bilateral talks. Um, my mindset, of course, having read everything that's happening, all the skirmishes that are being published in the papers, all uh, small incidents, smaller big incidents that make us think of war, again, um, Mr. Robbins was mentioning, right away our approach is like, we think that we should uh, wage war or that war is in, uh, war. War is inevitable. On the other hand, uh, the reason why we're thinking of it this way is because we feel that uh, arbitration is our last resort at this particular time. On the other hand, the term diplomacy extends way beyond all of the official actions of the government. You can have diplomatic talks, uh, unofficial diplomatic talks. I heard um, congresswomen were sent to China to further relations with the Chinese. And you can do this unofficially, even with meeting uh, with, with certain members of the, the, the Chinese um, delegation or government. What I'm saying is that sometimes when every, you know, the culture of the Chinese, and maybe also for some of us, the same face attitude. In front of everyone, you want to appear tough. 
But of course, nobody wants to wage war with anyone, especially now that uh, the globalization of economies, where we de de depend on each other economically somehow. So this is one point uh, that we need to look at, furthering the diplomatic relations, our independent foreign policies. Unfortunately, we're viewed as, um, and I say unfortunately, not because it's a bad thing, our relations with the US, but unfortunately, we always look at the US as the only ones that we can really rely to 100%. I lived in the U.S. and I've always been grateful for the opportunities I learned there. Uh, idealism, love and freedom, uh, protecting our democratic rights. But of course the U.S. also have this self-interest to protect. Um, another thing that uh, we, we always have to, to look at is our, um, as, as mentioned, that we are an archipelago and that uh, we really need to protect our territories. Now, with the U.S. being there, having said that, with this EDGA, uh, it was mentioned by the Vice President that we are also unburdening ourselves uh, from having to allocate so much in national security because we have the assurance that the Americans are here. But we also have to prepare for the long term because this is a 10-year renewable uh, agreement. Um, how prepared are we going to be if the Americans decide in 10 years that uh, we don't want to have the body anymore with the Philippines? We, we have to be able to prepare ourselves also for that. And then another point, um, I guess the last point I'd like to raise is that uh, we have to remember that uh, we are, we need to protect our own destiny in this country. As I mentioned, nobody else will think of what's best for our country, but, but us in particular. A minor comment on the EDCA, I think that um, the provisions are, are quite fair, except for, I was hoping that there would be some sort of uh, a provision on, on criminal liabilities in case any of their contractors or maybe military personnel commit the crime. Nobody's perfect. Uh, I'm not saying that we should prosecute them uh, unfairly, but at least respect the rights that the, the laws that we already have in our country so that there won't be any question that they're just being given preferential treatment in their ship So, uh, just one uh, point. Uh, there was no mention that uh, troopers will uh, pass through immigration. And uh, wasn't it uh, Benjamin Franklin who said that uh, visitors, just like fish, smell after three days? And they've been here for some time? I had the privilege of joining a group to study RBS relations and renegotiate. So, nakita namin many of the, of the problems with the United States in that agreement. Uh, and we saw it, for instance, the two most things that even now are not being addressed are extraterritoriality, which means this criminal crimes are committed, but happens. And the other is compensation. And I don't mean money. I mean if we are if we are partners, we have to be partners in every way. Not not I have a weak partner here and I am a strong one. Uh, from since 1977, with all of the United in the United States, you have to build us up to a point where we will have the same, the same or a similar way of defending ourselves. Because in the agreement with the Mutual Defense Treaty, uh, Article 2, I think, says each party is duty bound to develop its other's capability to resist armed aggression. And that does not mean the U.S. remains strong and we, we remain weak. And the reason why I say that also is because the U.S. has been giving away uh, a lot of uh, even hardware uh, to other countries that, uh, in my limited perspective, are not as important as the Philippines. Uh, the right of Sila, 500 million in sa Israel. In San Sa Poland, nung gusto nila ng coalition of the willing, 2 billion pumunta si George Bush sa Warsaw and, and said, we are, I'm writing off 2 billion uh, of your of your debt. And I'm not kasi dito bigyan nyo tayo ng 500 million in 10 years. Ang laki na ng ingay ng United States. Because the United States, uh, uh, in, in terms of international relations, are what I call force traders. They, they trade 
to maximize their advantage and to minimize what you can get from it. Parang, ano, value for money sila, pero from their side. So if we do not look at the horse in the mouth, never always look at the good horse in the mouth. Ang ganda nito, uh, mayroon tayong edka, gano'n, gano'n. Tingnan mo, let, open the mouth of that horse and look at the teeth. Are the teeth really uh, strong enough to bite and to bite in our behalf? It's, hindi pwede kasing uh, asymmetrical yung tayo natin na sila malakas tayo minina. We have always been asking that, that we should arm ourselves and at that time the answer of the U.S. was no, no, we cannot alter the, too much the balance of power in the region. We cannot give you hard work inside. And then two years later, nung, nung nagkaroon na sila ng missiles na iba, they were practically forcing us to put hard work inside. So what do you make of that kind of uh, treatment? Are they really our friends? Uh, maybe yes, they are our friends to a certain extent. But we have, uh, as mentioned earlier, we have to determine what is good for us. And my model, to, as a conclusion, is actually President Marcos when he said, take the stance. At the height of his, of his uh, presidency, I was looking at him as really absolutely he, 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 he was in the right direction, including, including the renegotiation of the United States. Okay. Uh, so, to sa military exercises, maglalaway lang yung Pilipino. Baka makita nyo yung Amerikano. Pagpasok mo ng ganun sa, sa, sa Philippine Bay, sa Philippine Bay, sa uh, Air Force, makikita mo yung mga SUV, magkakatapipiti, at saka gleaming in the sunlight. Gleaming. Then you walk a little about 10 degrees to the right, makikita mo na yung mga bahay ng mga enlisted men natin na parang mga squatters. Ba't tayo pumayot ng ganun? Let's see kayo, ba't ganyan ang kagandaan ng lugar na? Sirain niya, nagandaan niyo muna sa amin. Hindi ba natin kaya sa union? Pwede, kayo lang isin natin sa gawa. Bakit kaya? Dahil mahina tayo. Alright. Yun na nga, ultimately, as Senator, both Senator Grace and Senator Shahani have said, we have to rely on our own resources ultimately. We, we, uh, that, that's the essence of uh, foreign policy. We can develop allies, sure, but ultimately we cannot rely on anybody else but ourselves. That, that is the unfortunate reality of international politics up to now. And uh, that is where we need to exercise a lot of political and uh, diplomatic, uh, diplomatic uh, expertise. Uh, uh, let me just uh, pursue some of my points earlier. Okay, we filed an arbitration, uh, we, we filed our case before the International Arbitration Panel. Do we have a clear post-arbitration uh, plan? We don't have any. So, suppose we win the case. Of course, China from the very start said we do not recognize the filing of your case. Okay, suppose we win any. There is no enforcement mechanism right now in the in international politics that will allow us to, uh, to, to uh, uh, that will force China to comply with any international duty if, if, they, if they refuse to do so. In the same way that other major powers, uh, most notoriously the US itself, has also refuse to comply with any international agreement, uh, in international uh, uh, arbitration decision if it runs against their interests. And that is the reason why important nga yung, uh, to explore all forms of uh, uh, communication and dialogue with China, including what I've already mentioned as bilateral relations, track two diplomacy, even track three diplomacy meaning people-to-people -people relationships. All of this we should have. Okay, maganda itong usapan. Manang Leti, please. Mago tayo tumakbo sa iba pa namin panahon. Yeah, I just want to uh, take on to this is a complicated issue and I think the media has to maybe be aware of this process. Now, 
I think the whole thing, let's, let's look into our own foreign policy. We should, because we are an archipelago. America is a continent, you see. And, and before the Americans came, before the colonizers came to our country, we were mariners, we were sailors. And we reached as far as, we, uh, we were Austronesians. You see, we reached as far as Madagascar because we, we mastered the, the currents, the waves, the stars. We had no compasses, but we were able to sail in each other's lands. In other words, there was a culture, an Austrian, a, a, a maritime culture, which we should go back to. Now, of course, Spain came and, and really wanted to Christianize us. But they were able to, to landscape these islands no, by putting the plaza, the church, the, the municipio, etc., etc. When the Americans came, and this is something which our scholars should really study, and also the media, they looked at us as insurrectos, as insurgents in our own country. Imagine to, to call us in, in the Philippine American War was 1901 to 1903. And they've always looked at us as insurrectos. And when General Arthur MacArthur came here to really help militarize our country, they only assigned a Navy patrol. And they really concentrated on the training of our infantry forces. And maybe Commodore, is it not Commodore, you are from the Navy? Oh, oh, you see that. Am I correct in saying that the American government downgraded the development of the Navy from the time they came here. They just wanted a Navy patrol. I think because they wanted us to buy their cars made in Detroit. I know that because my father was so obsessed with buying a Dutch car in 1935. And I, you know, we, we, this was the American era uh, pupils. And so they wanted cars. And we forgot that we could sail really from uh, Ilocos Norte uh, to, to Suas on a boat. And this is why the MacArthur Army is always so crowded with US made, now of course Japanese made. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is what I'm trying to say. We have lost our maritime moorings and we have to go back to them to understand foreign policy. We are a fishing shipping country. We are pretending to be living on a continent when we are not. There are 7,000 islands. And we better accept this as a fact, you see. And um, I agree that the, the self-reliance is so important that we can defend our own self. Nobody should really defend us. Of course, we have to buy time. I think this is this was the thing under this government, you know, uh, and we should never be put under pressure. Why do we have to agree on that? Why do we have to sign the agreement when Mr. Obama comes here on a specific date? You see, and these are all of the pressures we sort of willingly accept when we should tell the Americans also to wait. Of course, we are under threats. You so, see. what you're saying, Madam Lady, is uh, without sounding basis, Lutong Makawil? Lutong Makawil agreement? No, hindi naman Lutong Makawil. So, I wanted you know, to invite somebody from the negotiating panel. Oh, we invited say, them. Being a member of the DFA before, hindi naman sila tamang o kago. No, I mean, I, we have to respect them as professionals. But I think uh, they were too much under pressure and they should have been exposed to a wider constituency, the academics, the scholars, mm -hmm. the fishermen, the women, see, so that they know how to fight. Like Bonifacio had to fight with his bodo. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that is now the uh, attitude we should have. Self-reliance, because there's no other way except that. Over the long term, of what time at all? May isa tayong panahon dito, uh, meron lang pahayag. Kasama natin si Riden Alcantara. Riden, shift muna tayo sa Edka. Ano yung problema nyo? Pakisuyo lang. Pagkakang okay, umaga po ako si Riden Alcantara. Pagkakulo ng NXP Semiconductors ng New York Corporation of Workers in Mongol. Na naka-update sa Kabuyo Kanwila. Ito po ay uh, dating Philips uh, Semiconductors Incorporated. Uh, 33 years na po ang aming union at uh, nasa 11 term ng CPA. At 
para mabarat yung aming sahod, tinanggal po ang 24 na opisyales at Lego Panel ng Union. Ano po yung relasyon nito sa pangyayari ngayon? Um, sinasabi ng batas na sa CBA kami humingi ng dagdag sahod. Sinasabi din ng Dole na paparusahan niya ang lahat ng lalabag sa holiday. Noong April 9, kasama namin ang aming pamilya. Hindi kami pumasok dahil ito ay holiday. Yun ang naging dahilan kung bakit kami tinanggal. Pero ang totoo, gusto niya na mapahina at ipalulong sa mga manggagawa ang mababagsahod. Anong relasyon sa pangyayari ngayon sa Pilipinas? Lahat ng mga union, lahat ng mga organisasyon ay tinuduro para walang lumaban doon sa mga isyu na politika kagaya ng pangyayari ngayon, magkasunod yung EDCA at Chacha, ang mga manggagawa ay nakikialam din sa mga isyu na may kinalaman o maaari silang maapektuhan. Napakahaba na ng panahon pero mailap pa rin ang katarungan sa mga manggagawa at mamamayan. Naghanap ang kahirapan at kaputuman. Pero nasaan yung mga foreign policy na ito ba ay naglilingkod para sa mga manggagawa at mamamayan o naglilingkod lamang para sa ihinan? Kaya patuloy na lumalaban ang mga union, organisasyon, ngunit ano yung ginawa ng kumpanya ito ng multinational na pagmamayari ng Holberg, Krebis, and Robert. Ito ay isang private equity firm na pagmamayari ng US. So dahil malabat ng mga magagawa sa dagdag sahod, gayon din sa mga politika ang may kinalaman sa kanila, ay uh, dinudurog ng mga union at samahan ng mga magagawa para mapahina yung protesta uh, hinggil sa pagtaas ng uh, sahod at benepisyo ng mga magagawa Ganyan din yung pagtutol sa mga pulisiya na kaka-apekto sa mga magagawa kagaya ng kontraktualisasyon. So, saan, mga, saan makakarating itong protesta nyo ngayon? Um, ngayon po, um, nagpaprotesta po kami sa Department of Labor and Employment sa iba't ibang kahensya ng gobyerno kagaya ng PESA dahil parang ang PESA ay isang republika dito sa Pilipinas na may sariling batas na niyurakan yung ating uh, Uh, batas paggawa sa Pilipinas o mismo pati yung ating konstitusyon. Um, meron din po kami international campaign uh, dahil multinational ang uh, NXP ay uh, hinihingi namin ang suporta ng mga magagawa at mamamayan sa Pilipinas at sa ibang uh, bansa dahil hindi po simpleng laban lamang ito ng magagawa sa Pilipinas. Kung hindi laban sa mga neoliberal policy na nakaka-apekto sa mga manggagawa at mga mayan. Kasama rin natin, mga kaibigan, ang isa sa mga taga Maguindanao. Alam po ninyo, buong akala natin, eh, masaya na yung bangsa molo. Pero meron po na it's a puwera eh. I remember we had uh, chairman uh, of the negotiating panel, William uh, Coronel Perez. And uh, she said that the agreement will be inclusive. Pero kasama natin si Alim Bandara, isang figura eh na nandun sa pinakapuso ng Bangsamoro. Uh, Alin, ano talaga yan ninyo ngayon doon sa upin, sa Maguindaro? Uh, doon sa tanong, yun ay talaga yan doon sa Maguindaro. Ano yun? Uh, bago po sa sagutin. Sasabihin ko muna kung ano yung pakay na nito, bakit ko dito. Um, ako po yung team leader ng six person loving team. From Minda na ako, and doon po ang ating mga kasamahan sa likod. May mga kapitubo from the core area of the Baksamoro, and then may from the adjacent area. Ang pakay po namin dito sa Lagi Mission is para sa full inclusion of indigenous people's rights sa Baksamoro. Sa pagka yung nakasubaybal sa nagiging galon ng peace process. And dahil lumabas yung framework agreement sa bansa moro, sa tingin ng mga katutubo, sa gitna ng mga pagsisikap nila para i-assert yung kanilang karapatan na may isa man dito sa pangpangkakayapaan, 
e limitado pa rin ang ibigay sa mga kapatulong ito. Halimbawa, ang pinakamalaking issue dito doon ito sa ating identity. No? Kung matandaan ninyo, ang lahat ng mamamayan sa Bangsa Moro ay tatawagin Bangsa Moro. Samantala, kaming mga indigenous people na kinilala na sa batas, eh, parang mawawala yung aming identity. No? At ang, ang sinasabi doon sa FAQ ay may freedom of choice kami. No? So para sa amin, uh, hindi nakabubuti, malinaw na kung ano yung aming identity at dahil sa prosesong ito, uh, parang kapapitiliin pa kami kung, kung magiging bangsa sa mga bangsa or choice this. No? Sa parang sa, ang choice nyo, doon lang. Yes, sa uh, indigenous people, sa pagkat it follows yung indigenous people's napakahalaga yung iba pang karapatan. No? Kung ikilala ni Halimuha ng GRP at saka MIDF, yung distinct identity of that indigenous people doon sa bangsa Moro, it follows na dapat ikilala rin din yung iba na yung karapatan na limbawa sa lupain ni Nuno. No? Karapatan na rin. Ancestral lang. Yes, ancestral lang. At saka yung karapatan na rin sa sariling pamuno, pamumuno. No, sa pagkakarin din kami sa sariling sistema. No, sistema ng pamumahala, sistema ng uh, hostisya, no, yung customary process. No. Ang lahat ng ito, gusto namin maisama doon sa bangsa mo ng bisa ko. And ang nangyari ko, no, ang mag-coordinate ditong bangsa mo ng bisa ko, yung BTC, or bangsa mo ng transition commission, no, Ah, uh, since the beginning, hindi kayo kasama. Eh, kasama ko kami. No, kasama kayo. Kami. Yes. Pero ang ang resulta, ah, uh, lumiit nang lumiit yung mga tradisyon na kasama. And yes. And then ang medyo hindi maganda, ah, uh, yung final draft na isinumit sa Office of the President, what wala na kasi kakita sa amin. Hindi ko nakita sa inyo. Yes, hindi. Uh, kaya hindi namin alam kung ilan at ano doon sa mga provision na aming uh, isinusulong no, during the hearings of the BBC kung ano ngayon ang naisama doon sa drug basic law. Kaya uh, ang mission ito, kailangan namin yung alimbawa sila uh, senador, yung sa profesor, yung sa house of the professor sapagkat alam namin na from the office of the president dadaan ito dito at yung mga kulang ano ba kung hindi na isama ang mga karapatan ng katutubo na nasa loob ng core area gusto namin isama sa batas na ito na gagawin no? sapagkat very briefly gusto ko lang din balikan ng county no? uh, ang core area yung autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao that's the core area? yes okay at sa karanasan ng mga katutubo sa loob ng autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao, kung familiar kayo sa Indigenous People's Rights Act, hanggang ngayon, hindi na ipapatupad sa loob ng autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao. Kaya hindi pa namin gustong makulit ito sa bagong political entity na ito na patawagin bang sa puro okay. So, yan yung aming... Uh, Yes, opo. Okay. At kausapin namin sino sa mga legislators ang magiging mag-champion doon sa isyu ng katutubo na dapat may isama doon sa bangsa mo ng basic law. At doon naman sa media, dapat maunawaan din nila. So, pagka, uh, itong isyu ito, no? alam natin na pinaka-popular na disulta ng isang peace process. At kapag lumitaw itong isyu namin, pwede kami yung binanggit kanina ni Sir, no? Pwede kami tawagin spoiler. Oh, spoiler yes. na local no? level contra kanya. Yes, uh, hindi ito uh, opposition to the Barca Monogasic Law, kung hindi pag lugar lang, no? Doon sa mga uh, karapatan na karapat dapat na kinilala na ng batas ng Pilipinas na dapat dahil sa bagong legislation na ito na hindi siya pwede mawawala, no? Dapat pwede pa nang paunlarin, no? Ay ano ang sinasabi sa amin ay yung mga karapatan namin na isama sa bangsa mo ng basic law ay lampas pa, no? More than ipra or indigenous people. Okay. 
Kakaknya nah, nangis itu nama lima kita. Anu mencura, anu bagus. Itu modal ibra nasi nasi. Kakak dengan lima kita, yun ang uh, nagbibigay ng panambah sa amin ng mga kasutubos sa loob ng uh, bangsa Morocco, Port Elia, sa Mindanao, Mindanao at sa Islands, Provinsya sa Basila, Sunil Salsa. We'd like to acknowledge we have with us the major networks. We also have with us uh, friends from POPAP and from the Diplomatic Court. Please identify yourself and go ahead with the question. Go ahead. Tadi kita di <laughs> Si si Bilang 
he has exhausted all legal, diplomatic, and uh, uh, bi bilateral uh, uh, options. Uh, if we have to go back to bilateral, whom do you propose should start it? Because at this time that we have filed the case, uh, it would be embarrassing if we are the Chinese, you know, to go back to the table when we have actually sued them before the uh, arbitral tribunal. The, the second question is that uh, all of you were proposing, you know, to for us to be self-sufficient, you know, but no, but we are weak, and in fact, we don't, we don't have a military force to speak of. Uh, how come nobody is proposing? that the economy should be strengthened in order for us to be able to afford the things that we need in order to become a militarily strong country. Okay. So that's a question to Dr. Rivera, please. Uh, <clears throat> the uh, bilateral talks, you know, uh, it can assume several forms actually. You know? It can be official or unofficial. You know? Unofficial, siguro, given the... Uh, the crisis now, uh, we, we might start uh, with some unofficial opening of relations. No? In fact, we don't even have to broadcast it officially that we are doing that. The government can appoint somebody it trusts and uh, who is also acceptable to the Chinese government, and we can start the talks that way. And, and later, siguro, baka peding maging official na, the government can appoint uh, a relatively high-ranking person. No? Ang, ang problema na complicate na nga kasi eh, dahil uh, we've filed the case, the memorial, uh, we've, we've, uh, we have the EDCA, so it will be more difficult now, but nonetheless, it can be done, I think, no? if, if, the, uh, if the government decides to do it. And as I said, uh, hindi, we, we can also expose other, other forms of uh, linkages and communication. Nanjan yung mga informal uh, linkages natin, no? For instance, the business community, no? We, we can activate all of those linkages, no? Yung mga historic business ties natin na yan. All of those should be activated, no? Uh, in fact, yung ginawa ng uh, grupo ng mga women uh, congress uh, persons is a step in the right direction. We should be doing all of those, no? Itong recent visit na ginawa ng lower house. It's a step in the right direction. So we should be doing all of those. Now, your point about uh, the uh, military, or more specifically the Navy, it goes without saying that we should strengthen our Navy and Coast Guard in particular because precisely we are an archipelagic country. The problem, however, is because for a long, long time up to now, we don't have a clear strategy about doing that nakasalalay palagi dun sa American strategic interest eh, no kaya hindi hindi nangyari yon well part of the reason of course is the uh, is the uh, poor economic uh, growth and development we cannot also allocate uh, tremendous resources to do that but uh, again uh, i think a, a more independent foreign policy will uh, should lead to that especially now that the economy uh, is doing a little better, that again, uh, a, 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 a response uh, that is taking place in the context of a greater American strategic policy. No? <coughs> so, yun ang naging proble yun ang problema sa tingin ko. No? All right. Malang Leti, would you care to add to uh, what has been said? Yeah, I just would like to uh, answer your question, sir. No, yung we are weak. We are weak because we think we are weak. But if we are strong, we are strong. At matapang yung Pilipino eh. That is something we should not forget. Now look at the other countries. Why did India become a space power? They, they have their own space. Uh, they go now into space. And they just had to, uh, they just had to rely on themselves. They, they could not just get the Russians or the French always to be with them, but they, they got their best scientific minds and managed to go into space. Uh -huh. And that, that space man was, was uh, President Kamal of India. He was a president of, of, of the Republic of India, but he was also a space scientist. <clears throat> the Vietnamese, look at the Vietnamese, they defeated the Americans. 
If you go to you go to Hanoi, they will show you the museum there of this tall American being captured by a small Vietnamese. And what did the Vietnamese say when when the Chinese put that rig in their own waters? Anong sinabi yung mga Vietnamese? Lumaban sila eh. They said the the Chinese have invasion in their blood, but we Vietnamese have resistance in our blood. Ayun na nakakalimutan natin eh. Yung bakit si si Andres Bonifacio kinalaban niya yung mga Kastila, ginabi niya yung bolo. Hindi naman yung baril o Pero man ang letting, ang sabi kasi eh. No, in other words, no, yung uh, kung kung wala yung Amerikano, kawawa tayo. That is true in a way. Uh, I don't know Commodore might say we don't have the capability. To uh, can we go into Carburoshol <laughs> and then uh, have a ship there and tell the uh, tell, tell tell the uh, Chinese. Chinese and then if they fire their uh, water cannons on us, we fire. what can we do? A libertador or a firecracker? Uh, but you know we are not that stupid or that lacking in resources. And I think we should try uh, that Filipino mind, which is so creative, to try to defend ourselves. Why are we so scared? That's what I don't get. Okay. You see? So let us get out of this mindset that we are weak. Yes. We are strong and we are capable of defending ourselves. Okay, over the long term, importante rin yung timing, no? Because I don't think we should commit suicide. <laughs> But we can defend ourselves, and we can be a match for the Chinese. That is what we have to 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 say. Okay. Palo up kay Senator Siani, Senator. I cover the the Senate also, no diplomatic post. I'm Rick Tomerseni from the Business Mirror. I was just wondering. Please, wag kayo masadong malapit sa microphone, kasi bigi ako ng konte. Senator, I was just wondering, how come no one in the Senate, no, in our government? is asking for a movement no to hastily improve our economy in order to have the necessary resources for us to be able to to buy the equipment to, to fight our perceived enemies and okay. uh, but sideline lang ito kay senator Shihane, si she was long in foreign affairs yeah. how come that succeeding presidents were not able to strengthen our military Ah, uh, kasi maraming masyadong nangungurakot sa pera ng bayan. It it needs money to to buy equipment. Now, do we really need all of those equipment? You see, this is what this corruption is all about. You see, in other words, we are using the people's money to line up the the pockets of of personal people who are already well off. So, so. And and defense is important. So. Tama yung sinabi ni Commodore Robles, and I'm glad he's from the Navy, by the way. Why don't you shoot a a a question to the Commodore about our Navy? Oh, sige, my my former sige. Sige, papala. Sige na, papasagutin naman natin si. Hindi ito kasama ko sa Senado ng araw eh. Maybe he remembers the vote. Okay, 1991. Okay. Yeah, I write that story. Teka, teka, sige na lang. Mamaya may tanong mo. Pasagutin mo na natin si Commodore Robles. Yes, Commodore. Oh, some modernization. Whatever happened to it? Alam mo, neglect has a price. Neglect is not free. We neglected that area of our of our country's defense for a long, long time. Even with the clear signs that we should do something about it. Now we are several decades behind. Even with the most positive economic projections, it will take us several decades to catch up. Right now, if there's a shooting war, the enemy does not have to see us over the horizon at 35 miles. They can shoot us out of the water. So what are you talking about? May mga barko kayong dalawa dyan? It will take them only a couple of minutes to get rid of that. And they don't even have to sweat it out. So let's forget about Hindi uh, naman, I'm sorry to say this. Uh, let's, first of all, let us accept that we have to pay the price for neglect. It is not free. We have to pay it. Nag-neglect tayo doon sa defense natin, sa foreign, foreign policy natin, then that is what we get. And the Chinese know this very well. 
that we are not good at protecting ourselves on the long term. We, we decided to, to, to put all our eggs in one United States basket. So it's, it's, a, it's a pity. And besides, uh, if I may, I need about two minutes for this. Nung binenta natin yung mga bases, it is for the purpose of buying equipment for the military. Anong ginawa ni Presidente at that time, President Ramos at that time? Uh, he was not able to follow this through. For whatever reason nang nangyari sa kanya, pero hindi niya pinili. At that time kasi, ang mga offer ng mga British atin, mga, mga arms sales, you just sign a contract and they will give you uh, the equipment without payment. May mga 10 years grace, may 5 years grace. In other words, we could have, uh, I'm sorry, but grace talaga ang tawag doon, eh, yung hindi ka nagbabayad. Grace period. Oh, grace period. <laughs> so, mayroong 10 years grace kasi napapaganon siya pag sinasabi. Uh, Iba naman si Senador. Ngayon, Amazing grace yun. Just very quickly. Right after the war, the United States, na yung Europe, wala naman yan. Dito sila, dito nasira yung Pilipinas dahil sa United States eh. Pero doon nagbigay sila ng $1 billion loan. You know how much, how, how much, how many years grace? 50 years. $1 billion with 50 years grace. Yan ba ang kaibigan natin na US? Are they really friends? Did they really want to develop us? Hindi. Wala silang pakialam. So, that's why yung mga point ni Senator Shahani na we should think for ourselves, yung point ni Senator Po na we should think for ourselves, it's only us who can lift us out. Pero right now, to think of economic gains in order to catch up is, uh, is, is very difficult. But Professor Rivera is saying, is, pwede ko lang siya tawagin na Temi. So Temi, Temi is saying this, <laughs> na... There are other venues, ang ganda ng pagkasabi kanina na uh, katulad ni Pangilinan, nagsabi siya na magkaroon siya ng joint venture with the Chinese. Si CIOO something. Reed Bank. CNO, no? Uh, alam mo, bakit Bank. ang mga insik, why will they sit down with Pangilinan for joint venture if they think that it belongs to them? Bakit sila makikipag-joint venture? Ibig sabihin, hindi rin sila sigurado. And if we talk joint venture, they want to talk to us. So why don't we go joint venture? Send another group by... Uh, yung sa... Ano ba yun? Yung sa... Yung isang insik natin na... Ano, mga, yung mga insik natin. Uh -huh. oh, basta, taipans. Pa, ba, mga taipans natin, pa, pa, magano sila. At saka yung point ni, uh, ni Professor na ni Temi na maraming mga relationships eh. Kasi ang leadership ngayon ng, US, ng Chinese are young. Eh marami tayong matatanda rito na mayayaman eh. Na alam mo nung nailala ko kasi sa Taiwan noon pag may kidnapping, hindi kami naghanap ng tao lang dito sa kidnap, kundi pumunta kami sa Taiwan. Mayroon kami kinakausap doon na matanda, na nakaupo doon, naka, alam mo naman, nakasando lang yon. Kukuha siya ng telefono, tatawag siya rito sa Pilipinas. By the time we arrived back in the Philippines, na-release na yung na-kidnap. So, ibig sabihin, may connection yan eh. If there are that, and the Chinese are really more connected than we think. Or, I don't know if that is how, how I, I feel that they are more connected. So, we can use that, as suggested by Professor Rivera, to do the bilateral relationship. It's not just talking. Mm -hmm. It's developing a total uh, array or panoply of of uh, bilateral talks. Well said. Okay. Okay. Uh, Ernie Reyes po sa interaction.com ng TV5. Uh, ang tanong ko po sa inyo, uh, kanina, ma, kanina, if you don't kanina. mind sa lahat, nabasa niyo na po ba yung EDCA? Have you read? Okay. Based on that platform na sinabi niyo kangina, do we really need EDCA? Why or why not? Yes, please. Um, nabasa ko yung superficially, no, yung mga title. Uh, I've been, I was part of the talks with the uh, with the U.S. regarding renegotiations, you know. Whenever you go into an agreement with with another uh, country, there are several, there are certain steps para walang madulas, walang walang para sigurado. First of all, you have to have a joint statement by the heads of state. Sa anyon, wala. Pangalawa, after the joint statements are made, 
then there will be a statement of issues. Kung ano yung mga issues to be discussed. Actually, wag muna. Terms of reference muna. What are the terms of reference that will govern our talks? Wala rin yun. And then, you go, from terms of reference, you go into issues, and then, you talk negotiations. Ang nangyari, pag tinanong mo ang gobyerno tungkol sa EDCA, sabihin nila, ah, pag-uusapan pa namin yun. I've, I've read that several times in the newspaper eh. Pag anong mangyari dito? Ah, pinag-uusapan pa yan. So what do we have at EDCA? We have what we call a terms of reference without a joint statement from the both presidents. Because pumayag tayo na pirmahan ng kanilang ambassador, pirmahan ng ating Secretary of Defense. Masyadong malayo ang ano ang ang uh, level. So bakit tayo pumayag? I don't know. Uh, you ask those people there. Pero ang masabi ko lang, pag pag ang EDCA lang ang sasabihin natin, madulas 'yan eh. Madulas 'yan. Para kang mawak ng palos, kailangan ang palos lagay mo muna sa cage na tali talian mo para pag uh, gumalaw siya, oy, sandali. Hindi pag uh, ano para ikot-ikot kayo, yung dalawang issues na sabi ko dapat tingnan natin extraterritoriality and the question of uh, compensation is not clearly put out there. And uh, what I can say is, every time a question is asked, the most common answer is, we will still talk about that. Okay. For the information of our friends in the audience, we also invited Secretary Gasmin to join the panel today as we also invited the Deputy Political Officer of the American Embassy. However, the uh, American diplomat is in Washington. He could not make it. He promised to send a representative, but no one's available. I was told by the Department of Defense that they cannot come uh, with uh, a representative today because they will still present the details of the agreement to the Senate. I said, why don't you limit your statements to what you presented to the Senate? But I didn't get any answer again. So we tried our best to invite the two sides to the agreement, but nobody came. It's okay. We have the experts here for a follow-up. So we really need EDCA? Well, <clears throat> my uh, response uh, precisely is to examine EDCA in, a, in, a, in its broader context, political context ng relations natin with China and the U.S., I think what EDCA has done or is doing right now is to further intensify the conflict that is already there. No? Yun ang, ang nangyari nga eh. Dahil instead of uh, because we miss certain earlier opportunities no? for pursuing productive dialogues with China, now here comes EDCA. If you were viewing it from the Chinese uh, position, what EDCA does precisely is to strengthen, if we may use the term, the so-called hardliners in the, in the Chinese establishment because now you are providing another uh, bullet, so to speak, for the hardliners to say, look, what are they doing to us? They are further containing us, no? Yeah, yun eh. But at the same time, uh, yung mga namang umaasa na the EDCA is a surefire guarantee, that uh, there will be no armed conflict or the U.S. will respond to any form of armed conflict. We also know that the EDCA does not do that. There, there is no such ironclad guarantee, no? Uh, in spite of the uh, last-minute attempts by President Obama to provide us with that. No, yeah, voila, if, if you examine the EDCA, no? So, uh, I, I see it as an unfortunate turn of events because it has uh, done away, it, it forecloses opportunities that we could have exploited earlier and risk further intensifying the conflict. No? Yun ang, ang tingin ko. Thank you. Thank you. Manang Leti, please. Uh, I'm glad that Mr. Reyes is there because he was in the Senate when I was there, correct? Nandunong ka ba when we voted for determination of the basis. Yeah, in 1991. Yeah. That, was that was there. really a historic vote. And I felt, 
although I I was not part of the Magnificent Twelve, no, and I wanted to do really part, but I had many other considerations. Like I had to support Cory Aquino as the chairman of the Foreign Relations Committee. I felt I could not go against her, but my heart was really with the Magnificent Twelve. But that's not uh, beside the point. But that was a 11 to 12, and Salonga, whom I admired uh, now, unfortunately he's very sick now. He cast the vote, the deciding vote, as president of the Senate, 11 12. Panalo yung 12. Now, that was a, a parang, for me, it was a very historic decision of the Filipino people for us to be free of foreign bases. And this is what our Constitution says. After the expiration in 1991 of the agreement between the Republic of the Philippines and the United States of America concerning military bases, foreign military bases, troops or facilities shall not be allowed in the Philippines except under a treaty duly concurred in by the Senate and when this Congress so requires ratified by a majority of the votes cast by the people in a national referendum held for that purpose and recognized as a treaty by other contracting states. So in other words, my complaint against EDCA is it was done without any respect for the historic background of the basis. You see, parang hindi na parang inichafere nila yung nangyari sa Senado. You see, and for me, you know, it, it left a very deep impression on me as, as a senator. Because, and now in retrospect, and with all due respect to my good friend Dick Gordon, you know, he was saying, oh, you know, unemployment uh, will take place, all the bars will close in Subic, walang hanap buhay ang mga tao. But look, after Subic and, and Clark were renovated with their own in, entrepreneurial talent, ang ganda-ganda ngayon ng Subic. But of course now, uh, they say, well, the Philippines papasok na naman sila. And of course, all of the bar girls are so happy because they'll be back in business. You see, so ayun yung kwano. We we went into so many agreements where we forgot, like the visiting forces agreement. And I'm glad uh, Senator Grace mentioned the uh, criminal liability of military personnel. Remember the case of uh, Corporal Daniel Smith and Nicole, who claimed to be raped. I, as the author of the anti-rape bill, which makes rape a crime against the person, not against chastity, as again, as said in the Spanish Penal Code. I attended the trial every day in the Makati Regional Trial Court, and I, I give my salute to, to Judge Puson, wherever he is now, that as the author of the anti-rape bill, I was so glad that this domestic legislation, which I authored while I was in the Senate, was respected by our courts. So he was put in the Makati jail, the Corporal Smith, for maybe one day. But the moment he was charged, he appealed to the Supreme Court, I mean to the Court of Appeals. And what does the BFA say? The moment the American military personnel appeals to a higher Philippine court, the government loses jurisdiction over him because he can be transferred now to the US Embassy. And this is where he, w he went. And then later on, he was freed because our own judges, the three women judges in the Court of Appeals, decided that it was consensual sex, not rape. And these were the female judges. I said, my God, how could they have said that, you see? And then the American Embassy, I hope there's nobody here from the American oh, Embassy. There's somebody. OK, there's somebody. OK. Uh -huh. you, can, you can hear it. I hope I'm not committing a oh, crime. Yeah. He just came in, he just came in or that I will not be allowed to go to the United States. <laughs> but you will be barred. <laughs> Nicole was given a U.S. passport, and I understand from her mother, because the family relationship broke out. They, were all, they all fought against each other, and they lost their canteen in Sambuanga, which was supposed to be a, uh, a, a Filipino canteen, but was really part of the American facilities there. She was given a passport and pocket money, 
so she could go to America and then uh, to the land of milk and honey. And she found her honey, and she found uh, a boyfriend. And now she's married. And tapos ng kwento. Is that really the Filipino uh, story to are wanting to be defended by America? You know, I'm sorry, no? I mean, this is now is the, is the person of a lawmaker who spent nine years to have that anti-rape law approved in the House and in the Senate. It was a controversial bill, and I hope uh, my good friend Senator Grace will look it up, because no one has been charged under that law up to now, I think. And uh, this is what I said. So we have these historic memories. VFA was very dramatic. This was in the media for so long, but we seem to have historical amnesia. Nakalimutan na natin yon. So I think this has to be looked at. VFA, of course, is a treaty, correct? It was discussed in the Senate, and criminal jurisdiction was one of those uh, things which I think has to be looked into. And I think the women who are against domestic violence should look into this, you see. And then that historic vote in 1991, parang hindi nangyari yon. Mm -hmm. So there should have been consultation. Ayun ang, tinat ang hinihingi ko lang eh na parang tinago nila. I am not, of course, the question is, should we not have had an interim arrangement with this chaotic, uh, chaotic situation now? Mm -hmm. Because I agree with the professor that we can develop, especially among ASEAN countries, among maritime countries, diplomatic initiatives. But this will also take time because China, is a major trading partner of all of the ASEAN countries. This is why we cannot get any support in ASEAN. Only Vietnam is there. This is also part. So what I am appealing for is a really realistic analysis of, of, the, of the issue. Okay. We maybe need a kind of an agreement with America, but not of the EDCA type. Pero tapos ng boxing eh. Oh, na knockout na tayo. So, na hindi sumusuntok. Uh, anong, anong susunod? Oh, maybe we can do another Pacquiao. I don't know. <laughs> All right. But uh, this is now. This is how I see the situation. And there are many things which I'm sure if if America recognized these uh, difficulties, that they are legitimate grievances, not just. Uh, uh, I mean, I'm I'm fairly I'm a fairly balanced uh, person. I, I I I'm I'm grateful to America because I was educated there, mm -hmm. but I'm also a Filipino citizen. And that's foremost. And that is foremost for our, our for our security. So I hope this is what the American, our American friends, even those from the American embassy, will understand. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. And not report us. Uh, you know. To, uh, I don't know to whom, uh, but anyway. you know, uh, I, it. I sympathize with uh, Mr. Snowden, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Would you care Senator to, uh, Grace? Sandale, okay, Senator Grace Paul, okay. she may want to say something. Do we need EDCA or why? Why? Kailangan po ba ang EDCA? Ano to pang miscongeniality? Okay. Ma'am, si Ernie ba? Ganun pa rin ang itsura noong 1991? <laughs> okay, okay. Alam mo, alam mo, may ito yung masasabi ko kay, uh, kay Ernie eh. Pag lahat ng mga reporter sa Senado nandiyan nag, uh, siyempre natataranta para kunin ng statement. Si Ernie, magiintay lang yan sa tabi. <laughs> Tapos magugulat na lang ang senador nandun na sa tabi. <laughs> sanay na sanay siya sa Senado. Alam niya na yung timing sa lahat. Um, and maganda yung tanong mo. Akala ko, you will end at the question, did you read the EDCA? But this is actually a question that's not really been asked. Do we need it at this point? Well, initially, when I think about agreements, especially one, the Mutual Defense Treaty that started in 1951, which is renewed every now and then with the Visiting Forces Agreement in the late 90s and then the Logistical Agreement in 2007, we know that agreements, just like the con Constitution, will always have to be renewed or will always have to be defined according to the times. Uh, but I think that now, having heard all of our esteemed speakers and our impressive minds around us, it seems also that yes, the EDCA could have um, 
awakened some sort of uh, uh, insecurity also with some of our neighbors. If there's anything, though, that we don't like about the EDGA, there's nobody else to blame but ourselves. Because leaders of every country has, will have the responsibility to defend what is to their best interest. We cannot fault the Americans for pushing what they think is best for them. It is really up to us to stand up and say, no, we will not accept this. And as uh, Commodore Robles mentioned, there is a price for neglect. Remember that even if our country is small, as Senator Shahani said, we have to be able to we have to be able to think and say that we can do something that we will prevail. Remember, Singapore is such a small country, but militarily they are a threat because they prepared themselves decades ago for this type of invasion. Um, Taiwan also, when they uh, separated from China, prepare themselves. They have an underground facility for their citizens. So it doesn't matter size and might. It's, it's really about having the discipline. Unfortunately, there are very few in our country who would like to be heroes. In the United States, when you go there, inscripted on their walls are the sayings of their forefathers, thinking about the legacy they will leave behind. In our country, there are very few of that. Um, as you mentioned about um, the Smith case, Yes, she opted to be to take what is perhaps the easier road, what's best for her. Can we blame her when the very leaders that she, see in our, she sees in our country would opt for the same thing? That is why we are not prepared in this country for anything in the future because we don't have the credibility, our leaders don't have the credibility for that. That's why we are pushing now. I'll weave this in now. We've pushed for the FOI, and we continue to push for the freedom of information because this is our first step to encourage a stronger democratic participation among our countrymen, to give them the information that's available, to make information available so that they can participate in policy making by the government. Because unless we have that information, we will not really know what's happening in our government. Kaya nga, what happened to all the initiatives, what happened to the loans given to us, we will never know because we can never scrutinize it. So again, we go back to transparency, to uplifting the government, um, to, to supporting the sunshine principle in, in government transactions, and again, for not blaming other countries for the failure of our leaders to uphold our own interests. Thank you very much. Thank okay. you. Tapos ang historia. Yes, please identify yourself. Uh, hello po. Good morning. I'm Chek Zabala, Media and Communications Officer from Alianza Tigil Mina. Uh, una po, gusto kong itanong kay Mr. Alim Bandara. Sir, nasabi niyo po na nagkakaroon kayo ng problema sa ancestral domains niyo. What particularly po ang nagiging problema natin doon? Or anong estado nila? Yes, please. Uh, bago ang sagot, uh, please allow me to present muna siguro very briefly yung aming team from Mindanao uh, para halimbawa kung may mga katanungan, uh, pwede rin natin i-raise sa kanila. No? Uh, may I call, dalawang grupo ito, isa from the core area, pwede mag lang dito uh, so, para matanong natin. And then from the adjacent, pwede mag tayo lang dito sa harapan. No? Uh, we can raise question to any one of them uh, during the forum or even after. Uh, doon sa tanong, uh, kasalukuyan, uh, the advice from GPH, no, doon sa mga indigenous people sa core area is to delineate the ancestral domain no, uh, through the NCIP process or itong National Commission on Indigenous Peoples. Uh, kaya lang may parang class of ancestral domains no uh, sapagkat uh, the MILF uh, ini-insist nila na there is only one ancestral domain no so nangangahulugan ito na uh, there is some problem no doon sa pinoproseso ngayon na ancestral domain delineation uh, sapagkat uh, Upon the ratification of the BBL, ma, 
uh, abolish yung autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao. And then, siyempre, maapektahan yung uh, delineation process, especially sa karanasan sa Mindanao, medyo matagal itong prosesong ito. No? It will take uh, several years. And uh, yung ancestral domain delineation, it just started last March of 2014. So ito yung nakikita namin na problema kapag hindi ma ayos ng pamahalaan, no? Uh, this will definitely create problem. Uh, doon sa indigenous peoples sa uh, core area, no? Uh, especially uh, the claim is involving around uh, 200 to 300,000 hectares of land including yung coastal water. Mm -hmm. So, ganun ka... Ganun kalala ang yes. sitwasyon. Opo, opo. Okay. Maraming salamat po. Uh, meron pa po sana akong sunod na tanong. This uh, we're, time naman... Uh, we're pressed for time. We can interview them siguro after the forum. Ah, okay po. Okay? We we'll limit our questions because it's getting late. Lingoy, may tanong ka. Go ahead. Maganda umaga po. Uh, Lingoy Elkwas ng opinion. Sige po. Uh, apat po yung tanong ko. Hindi, baka pwede mong bawasan ng konti. Uh, mga tatlo na lang. Uh, tatlo na lang. Dahil uh, nahuli po ako, kung natanong na po, please skip my question. Okay, go ahead. Kung nasa labas po ng paksa, eh, rule me out of order. Okay. Later. Um, okay, number one question, uh, especially kay Secretary Shani, bakit pumayag yung mga Amerikano na yung 99-year base treaty ay mabawasan to 45 ng Serrano Bolen Agreement. Number one, no? Number two, uh, sa anong feeling nyo, especially si Secretary Shani, si Senator Shani at si Commodore Robles, no? na nung pinatalsik natin ang mga base noong 1991, uh, nag po ang isang dekada ng uh, katahimikan dito sa Southeast Asia. Samantalang yung mga kaguluhan noon ay nandun po sa uh, Somalia, Rwanda, Bosnia, Kosovo, etc. No? At ikaapat, ikaapat, ah, ikatlo, uh, ito pong EDCA, ano kaya ang epekto nito sa problema ngayon na bumibili tayo ng lumang barko at bago ibigay sa atin ng ating mga kakamping Amerikano, tinatanggal lang pa ng mga armamento at uh, electronics na binebenta at binibigay nila sa iba't ibang kategorya ng bayan. Halimbawa, kagaya ng Turkey, meron silang Patriot Missiles. Sila po ay member ng NATO. Sa Egypt, hindi po member ng NATO. At marami pang ibang bansa na binibigyan nila o binebentahan nila samantalang tayong naging kolonya nila at naging kakampi nila sa Bataan at Corridor ay tinatanggalan nito at pagkatapos kailangan natin ng bumili ng bagong equipment, ikabit at tumataas ang presyo ng lumang bagong uh, barko. Salamat po. Manang Leti? <laughs> Yung uh, third question na lang because I can remember. Tama yung kung sinabi ni Lingoy. Now, we are just being taken for granted by America. Dahil alam yung mga Amerikano na mababait tayo eh. Kung ano yung sasabi nila, susunod tayo. So, ayun ang pinag-uusapan namin kay Commodore Robles na yung binibili natin na uh, mga barko, no? even that um, BRP barko ng Republika ng Pilipinas sa uh, Gregorio del Pilar. No? That is really a second-hand uh, Coast Guard vessel from America na uh, hindi na nila uh, magagamit pero tayo, you know, that Filipino philosophy na pwede pa eh, pwede pa, no? <laughs> so uh, that is what we are buying. Now, hindi naman kasalanan all the time ng mga Amerikano kasi I noticed even when I was in the Senate, yung modernization of the armed forces, hindi ba matagal nang pinag-uusapan yan? Opo. Yung, yung listahan ng mga armed forces, kung minsan, hindi rin nila alam kung ano yung binibili natin eh. Am I correct, Commodore? Because the equipment has now become so sophisticated 
that sometimes even our shopping list for weapons is not really up to date. We, we do not know really what we are, we are, we are doing. No? Uh -huh. So uh, I, I think we should be careful. At pangalawa, but hindi tayo gumawa ng ating sariling mga barko. Alam rin namin natin, shipbuilding was an industry in this country uh, during the Spanish uh, era. And we need ports. We need to build our ports. Uh, why do we have to go to the Malaysians or to the uh, other foreigners when we, we can do our own? Of course, there is a learning period. I'm not, I'm not very idealistic at, at age 85, you know. You, you have to have some practical experience. Ngayon yung sinasabi rin ni, ano, ni Lingkoy about other countries benefiting from, from the relationship with America and we not doing that. Ayun nga, wag natin kalimutan yung World War II. Nasira ang Manila. This city was destroyed because of the American and the Japanese. You see, the <laughs> Filipinos had nothing to do with this war. I'm sorry if I'm uh, offending people here, but that is true. Manila between the desire of the Americans to recapture it and, and the Japanese to surrender and die here, you see. We were really caught. So what is the war for? It was a proxy war as far as I'm concerned. And what did we gain from it? Really uh, nothing much. So I nakalimutan ko yung inyong kuwan, isang tanong ah. Pong, uh, Serrano Bolen, bakit pumayag ang Amerikano na mapaiksi uh, ang... Uh, well, because the Americans are also reasonable. After the Serrano Bolen from uh, reduced to 40 years, no, it was my father under Rask-Ramos agreement. It was reduced to 25 years. See, pumayag sila kasi gusto rin nilang... Sa, diplomasya yan eh. Ipakita mo sa, kwan, to the other side that you're also reasonable. Give and take, you see. But uh, we should not always be on the losing side. And this is what we have to understand. And maybe have the will, the political will to exercise an independent foreign policy. Thank you very much. Uh, Tess Ramiro, and then Jerry, and then we'll have the closing statements. Tess. Tess Ramiro, ang concern ko po para sa ating mga kapatid na katutubo, Kasi kung tayo ay nakafocus sa mas malaki ang problema tungkol sa ed EDCA, mayroong microcosm na problema ang nangyayari sa loob mismo ng ating bansa. As far as the group is concerned o yung katindang problema, ano po ba ang take ng ating kongreso, particularly ng Senado, tungkol sa problema nila? Alam niyo po, uh, the President will submit the Bank Samora Basic Law for ratification and in as much as we'd like to, to rush the approval of this, I'm glad to have attended this meeting today so that we can also take into consideration concerns like this. So I will study. I admit I'm not an expert. I haven't really uh, studied the concerns of our katutubos, but I know that in many parts of the country, there's always a growing concern about uh, their ancestral domain and their lands. So what I need to do now is to study the merits of this and perhaps have a Senate inquiry uh, regarding this one so that we will have a separate uh, hearing regarding this um, in conjunction with our uh, having to approve the Bank Zamora Basic Law. Thank you very much for the assurance. So, magkakaroon ng Senate hearing. Eh? Um, Pag-aaralan po natin kung okay. it will merit a Senate hearing. Maraming salamat po. Good morning. I'm Jerry Kibilan. It's about criminal liability. Manang Leti mentioned about Lance Corporal Smith. And I remember when I talked to my nephew, Jess Paredes, yesterday, upon the invitation of Melo, he told me that he even wrote about a book about it. I have admonished him not to be interviewed by inquirer. He, got, he lost his job as executive director of DFA because of his stand and position. Okay. It's the moving of Corporal Lance Smith from Makati City Jail at midnight to the American. Embassy. Okay. And this is a confirmation of Manang Leti say that we are brave Filipinos. Next month, it will be the, the celebration of victory at Pesang Pass. The Filipinos alone fought the Japanese there. That's the only place that it happened. Besang so we Pass. are brave people. Anyway, going to EDCA. The EDCA would not have happened if this, the 
people in the government right now will follow the suggestion of Manang Leti that she expressed at the understanding uh, the 21st China held at IAM. We were there mellow. And he was very strong in her statement that what is our interest? We're talking about a lot of things, but what is the Philippine you know, interest when it comes to relationship with China and other countries? I wish that the DFA and other government agencies will look at it, would listen to what Manang Leti said. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Senator Grace, uh, tell us, is it true that there will be a hearing tomorrow uh, to call some media killings? Uh, how, how bad is it that it necessitates a hearing? Well, um, of course, it, yes, I will, I will be conducting that hearing po, uh, being the committee chairman on public order and dangerous drugs. Kasama na po yan. Our media killings, I think, um, in terms of press freedom, our country's rank has really uh, decreased. Parang out of 170 countries, we're like 149th in terms of uh, the safest place to conduct uh, press freedom. So it's, it is a concern, and we'd like to know what the police is doing, their updates uh, with regards to the media killings. A lot of our media um, practitioners have written to my office, and not a lot, but there are some, that are being threatened by the very police um, heads that are supposed to protect them. So we'd like to, we'd like to discuss about this and, and see how our police uh, uh, leadership can actually protect our media practitioners. Okay, what about gun control? Dahil maraming napatay, eh na baril. Hindi ho sa pana, napatay yung media. Sa baril po. Opo, um, isa rin po yan, yun nga eh. Even our, our gun laws, our gun licensing laws should also be revisited. If, uh, just the just the mere fact that there was this quabo, there was this uh, disgust about how uh, gun permits can be obtained that uh, you only have to use a specific courier and if you don't that the courier takes months before you receive your permit and, and the problem with our country is not the responsible gun owners it is the ones that actually don't have permits for their guns. Indiscriminate firing, for example. It's been discussed so many times that we should increase the number of uh, months or, or how many years a person uh, charged with indiscriminate firing. The cases of Ella Nicole, um, I forget, Ella Nicole, Stephanie Ella Nicole, this uh, child who yes. was shot, a victimized. So again, irresponsible gun ownership. So, But for us to be able to encourage responsible gun ownership, we have to be able to make sure that the system in place is practical. Otherwise, if they have to register in one central area for their gun permits, it will be very difficult for those in the provinces to be able to comply. Okay, well said. Maybe we should, uh, you should invite the Japanese diplomat to attend the hearing because they have strict uh, gun control laws in Japan. Okay, sige. Uh, we'd like to bring an end to our discussion today. Uh, final statements mula sa ating kasama. Uh, yes, mula sa ating mga katutubo. Uh, <clears throat> kami po ay buong pusong nagpapasalamat no, sa forum na ito. Uh, para sa pagkakataon no, na maipaabot natin sa ating mga legislators and then sa media at iba pang uh, mamamayan na hindi nakakaalam kung ano yung mga pangyayari na nagaganap. No? Uh, especially concerning the indigenous peoples na siyang pinakamaliit na uh, sekta no? sa napakalaking usaping pangkapayapaan. Uh, especially itong between the GP8 at saka sa MILF no na siyang hindi lang pambansa yung uh, yung projection na ito ay isang magandang resulta ng uh, usapang pangkapayapaan kundi hanggang international no mm -hmm. at sa pagkakataong ito no uh, nagpapasalamat kami sa pag at least ngayon uh, Aware, yes, aware yung iba pang sector, no? iba pang mamamayang Pilipino na may mga issue na ganito. Uh, na ang direksyon ay hindi para hadlangan yung usapang pangkapayapaan, kundi para tutulong no? to reinforce pa 
yung ginagawa ng pamahalaan sa tulong pa rin ng mga katutubo na siyang laging naipit sa mga ganitong usapin. Thank you. Apa, maraming salamat po, Alim. Professor, for your statement, please. Well, uh, again, uh, briefly lang, uh, the uh, crisis has reached a point uh, where uh, we really need to explore, as I've said, uh, all possible kinds of uh, dialogue and communication with uh, China. Our responses so far have been uh, short-sighted and uh, dangerously uh, unproductive, I think. And uh, so hopefully uh, both the government and the uh, civil society sectors in our country will take the initiative to explore all of these uh, possible lines of communication and dialogue to address the problem. No? Thank you. So MILF? Well, uh, yeah, mabuti at uh, represented ang mga uh, IP brothers and sisters natin dito. Uh, uh, we really need to take a close look at the uh, draft law. No? Uh, hindi ko alam kung nasubmit na ito sa Congress. Hindi pa yata, no? Senator Grace. Uh, uh, but uh, you're right. Tama yung uh, sinabi ng ating representative na mara mukhang uh, may danger na mama marginalized din itong mga katutubong uh, mga katutubo natin dahil sa mga nabanggit na nga na mga batayan no yung uh, if, for instance I would be very interested in knowing ano ang ano ngayon ang magiging status ng IPRA no uh, kasi nandiyan na yan eh batas na yung IPRA under uh, uh, sa uh, sa ano, ano ang magiging status nito sa bagong uh, bubuin na ARMM no and then yung binanggit din niyo yung question ng identity yung land issues kailangan lahat ito ay maliwanagan sa anumang ipapasa na bagong batas no thank you Commodore Robles please pakilap wala na lang po ng mikropono ano nakikita niyo na magaganap Mayroon kasing manunulat tungkol dito sa situation dito sa sa Southeast Asia. Poor Southeast Asia. So near China, so far from God. <laughs> parang parang uh, parang biro, pero it's it's um uh, there is a grain of truth in it. Pero kailangan mayroon tayong paano ko pa sabihin, world view. para maintindihan natin kung ano ang nangyayari kasi pag titingnan mo from para sa akin pag if you have a world view kung ano nangyayari let's say between sabi na lang natin between the Chinese and the and the and the Americans hindi tayo masyadong magworry to the point of thinking about a shooting war kasi none of those countries the the last thing they need like a hole in the head is to shoot each other parang nagpapakamatay lang sila so Uh, panoorin natin kung ano mangyari between Vietnam and China. Panoorin natin kung ano mangyari between Japan and China. They said, Kuko, because the punishing moves by China which they threaten will not happen in the Philippines. It will happen in Vietnam or in, or in uh, Japan. So this, this punishment will not be slow. It will be fast. It will be fast and it will be over before you know it. And then you will see The, the Chinese will show that the Americans, ang kanilang mga protective umbrella is only a uh, parasol, using uh, Marcos before. It's a protective parasol, meaning it will not really protect you pagka mayroong, mayroong lightning strike ang China. But will China do it? I doubt it also. So yun lang, mayroon tayong perspective na ganun para pagka, let's say, sa media, for instance, wag naman dalhin kaagad ang istorya tungkol sa gera. Gera na kaagad. Bantayan lang natin kung ano mangyari sa ibang bat bansa na makikibigay sa atin ng panahon para mag-decide. Manang Leti. Well, uh, thank you, Melo, for creating this opportunity for all of us to uh, meet together. Well, sa foreign policy, no, if you look at all of the countries which have dominated us, colonized us, oppressed us, okay, Spain, okay, America, Japan, na yung tatlo, ha? Now, in retrospect, we are good friends now with Spain. 
Diba? Kasi galing yun yung ating uh, our faith, no? our Catholic religion, uh, our food, music. Okay. Yung Japan, okay. Tapos na rin yun. Now we are good friends because uh, we're both uh, against China in this thing. And we like sushi, uh, we like uh, tem- tempura. Uh, nakalimutan na yung Japanese occupation. No? And America, uh, we love hot dog, McDonald's. Uh, sandwiches, hamburgers, uh, Hollywood, sex, etc. No, <laughs> but that's where we that's where we got it because the Philippines are quite prudish. Okay, so in the long run, in the long run, we should really all be friends. What Filipinos do not like is when they are dominated, exploited, resisted for their own f- expression of freedom. So, please, neighbors, Filipinos are good people. We are mabait, masyadong mabait. But let us also be careful of our neighbors who may not be as mabait as we are. Okay. So, again, as I say, I close this saying, don't forget, we have no permanent friends, we have no permanent enemies, we have only permanent interests. So, please... Love this archipelago because we have a very beautiful country. Wherever you go, wherever you go, this is a beautiful country. So please live for it. And as Dino said, let us also die for it. Thank you. Senator Grace, please. Um, Thank you, Mr. Acuna, for this opportunity. Again, for inviting me. I've heard many Good things about you. Kayo pala yung naging editor ng Philippine Collegian din natin. At kaklase pa ninyo. Ah, kayo po ba yun? Demi. Demi po. Demi po. Eh, kayo naman po ay Radio Veritas, no? Pero um, today, I'm very fortunate to be among those with uh, very great, brilliant minds. And from what I've learned time and again in a lot of forums, when whenever we complain about so many things that are happening in our country, what we really lack is foresight. We always think of Band-Aid solutions and we don't think beyond, let's say, five years. So it's really important to think of how we are going to impact the future in all the decisions that we make. Now, the reason why uh, sometimes we have all of these troubles is we, we sell our, ourselves short. Whenever we enter into negotiations, we are sometimes a sellout to people that we prefer or people that we have um, dealings with. And the reason behind that is also because sometimes the leaders that we have, uh, we cannot necessarily trust. So it's important that, in, that we do not doubt them. And we can only have that if they are transparent in their transactions, if we have access to government um, um, dealings. And so we have to push for certain legislation for that. And one of them is the freedom of information. Um, and I think that when we think of the future, what is very important and what is so striking and what was mentioned here today is the post-arbitration scenario. If we are going to go here, if we're going to deal with a big, uh, with, with, a, with a country like China, we have to realize that diplomacy is very important. It's not necessarily selling ourselves out, but it's being practical also because after the arbitration, what happens? Are we really ready to face uh, the consequences of that? Will the United Nations really help us? So if we are complaining about everything that's happening around us, we have our leaders to blame, but we also have ourselves to blame. Um, Remember that it is not in the interest of others to uphold our interest. So let's not look to the Americans, let's not look to the Chinese or the Japanese to think of what's best for us. We have to think of what's best for ourselves. So thank you. Thank you again for this opportunity. Mga kaibigan, nais kong pasalamatan ang ating mga panauhin. We'd like to thank our friends from the media, from the Senate, from the Foreign Relations, Foreign uh, Affairs Office, and our friends from FOCAP and the Diplomatic Corps. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be with you today. Magandang araw po.